Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. In this video we'll be cleaning and restoring these three old hand saws. This tenon saw is the newest of the three and I paid two dollars for it. This panel saw has an eight tooth per inch blade and cost me fifteen dollars. This rip saw has a five tooth per inch blade and also cost fifteen dollars. All three saws are made by Diston as shown by these medallions in their handles. Cleaning these saw blades will be a dirty job so I'll cover the bench top with this piece of scrap plywood first. The clean side goes down. I'll use a couple of hand screw clamps to hold it in place. The first step in the process is to remove all the saw handles. The tenon saw only has one screw left. I'll just go and fetch some tools. I've returned with the tools. The screws on the tenon saw weren't corroded so they were easy to remove. A couple of blocks of scrap wood might be useful. I didn't need that screwdriver anyway. I thought I'd need to use a hammer with the punch, but the bolts popped right out. Once the screws are removed, the handle should slip right off. We will need to fix this crack in the handle, but otherwise it's in good condition. The panel saw put up a much bigger struggle. I was only able to remove two of its four bolts with the screwdriver. The bolts and nuts on this saw were made from steel and they'd rusted. I eventually removed them by drilling a hole in the end of the bolt, then using a screw extractor. The screw extractor has a left-handed thread, which lets me hold the bolt firmly enough to unscrew the nut. The screws on the rip saw were made from brass and three of them unscrewed easily. The fourth one just needed to have its screwdriver slot cut a little deeper with a hacksaw blade. I tried to unscrew the ripsaw's medallion without any success and eventually discovered that it wasn't threaded at all. Now we can start removing the rust from the blades. I'm going to use white vinegar for the tenon saw blade. And if the panel saw would fit in this tank, it'd go in as well. I'm pouring two litres of ordinary white vinegar into the tank. Now I'll move the tank to a safe place for a few hours. While the vinegar is doing its work, we'll remove the rust from the other two saws with sandpaper. I'm using a cork sanding block because the saw is a big flat surface. This may well be the worst sandpaper ever. Maybe this one will work better. It's 80 grit, so it should work faster too. Okay, I cheated a bit, but it only took about 15 minutes of sanding in real time. These don't have to be sanded and polished to a mirror finish. So I'll get started on the ripsaw blade now. That's an acceptable finish for a working handsaw. The other one's looking okay as well. Both saws have one side with these swirly pitted marks. But if it feels smooth to the fingertips it'll work just fine. You can see a shiny side on every second tooth. I'll talk about that more in the saw sharpening video. This tenon saw handle is the easiest one to fix, so we'll do that next. All we have to do is put some super glue into the crack. Be generous with the glue here and work it into all sides of the crack. 
Then squeeze the joint together a few times to spread the glue. Now use one of your hand screw clamps to tighten up the joint and leave it alone for a few hours. The tenon saw handle was in good condition, but these two will need a lot more work. Let's start by removing the tape. The rip saw handle and blade were both very oily and smelly. I think it might have been dipped in diesel fuel to loosen the rust. The panel saw handle has the opposite problem. It's really dry and cracked. Let's start by sanding the panel saw handle. There's no lacquer left here, it's just dirt and grime. These interior curves are sometimes easier to sand using a long strip of sandpaper. For the tight curves I roll the sandpaper around a small piece of 25mm dowel. Sand the rip saw handle in the same way. For this one we're trying to remove as much of that dirt and oil as possible. After all the sanding the rip saw handle is okay but still dirty. With this much oil soaked into the wood there's no point even trying to glue this crack together. The panel saw handle turned out to be dry and fragile. I'll try to glue it back together but that saw may need a whole new handle. Fill the cracks and coat one of the surfaces with super glue. Then press the joint together a few times to spread the glue. Now we'll use some spacer blocks and a big G clamp to hold it together. I'll also use this tiny G clamp to hold the second crack together. I'll use my ruler as a substitute for the saw blade in the slot. It's been a couple of hours, so let's see how that tenon saw blade's doing. The rust feels like it's turned to mud. I'll wipe it off with a paper towel first. Comparing the two sides, that's very impressive. I'll just wipe it off and put it back into the tank for a second soaking. This clip's running at four times speed, so this was about one and a half minutes of scrubbing in real time. I'm using a coconut fibre kitchen scouring pad. That's very satisfactory, and a lot less effort than using the sandpaper. I think I'm going to have to get a bigger vinegar tub. The tenon saw handle has an intact medallion nut and bolt. But its other two bolts have no nuts, and one's damaged. The panel saw also has two damaged handle bolts. I could just buy replacement bolts, but as every amateur machinist knows, when you have thousands of dollars worth of machinery, you can save dozens of dollars on store-bought parts. I'll start by loading a piece of 16mm mild steel rod into the lathe. I use a collet block in my four-jaw chuck for little work like this, because that's easier than removing the four-jaw chuck to install the big three-jaw. Let's start up the lathe and face off the end. It's running at 1000 RPM and the feed rate is slow. Next I'll use a centre drill to put a dimple in the middle of the stock.
Then I'll drill a hole 10 millimetres deep. Next we need to tap threads into the hole using a tapered tap. I'm using the drill chuck to help me maintain correct alignment for the tap. I'm holding the tap handle with my right hand to feel for the bottom of the hole. I've also marked the hole depth on the tap. I usually back off the tap every half turn or so to break the metal chip inside the hole. Here I'm using WD-40 to wash the chips out of the hole. Now I'm using a plug tap to cut the threads all the way to the bottom of the hole. I'm doing this carefully because too much force will break off the tap. How much force is too much? Once you've broken enough taps, you'll know too. Wash out the chips again. Then test the bolt for fit. That's a length of 12.59mm with the bolt screwed in. The bolt has 19.12mm of threads, so we're getting about 6.5mm of thread engagement. Now I'll reduce the rod diameter to 14mm for the whole length of the nut. A second pass to remove another 1mm diameter, then reduce the shaft diameter to 9mm. Parting off the nut. Getting some chatter because the work has too much stick out. Switching tools to chamfer the three sharp edges. Put a piece of copper wire in the tailstock chuck to catch the part. This is much easier than trying to find it in the chip tray when it falls off and rolls away. Finish the parting off cut. Now we can take the nut to the vise to finish it. First, file the end down smooth. I'm draw filing this for a smoother finish. Now use your hacksaw to cut a screwdriver slot. Check the screwdriver for fit. I didn't actually mean to break through there, but the nut will still work okay. A couple of dollars for a saw handle nut and bolt seems pretty reasonable now, eh? Now it's time to use those new bolts on the tenon saw. We'll need to drill these two holes in the blade to 6.5mm. These holes in the handle will need to be drilled to 9mm. We only need to drill out these two holes, and only to a 9mm depth. Fit the blade back into the handle, making sure those holes are lined up. Then fit the three nuts and bolts. You can now use two screwdrivers to tighten the bolts. That's one out of three saws completed. Drill the panel saw handle and fit its bolts in the same way. Now spread a few layers of paper on the bench and apply a generous coat of linseed oil to the handle. You can use a rag, a paper towel or a brush for this. Just be sure to put any oil soaked rags in a safe place afterwards because they're notorious for spontaneously catching fire. 
The linseed oil won't do any harm to the metal blade. Now just leave the saws to dry for a few hours. In the next video I'll show how to sharpen the saws using their two distinct tooth patterns. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.